Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to pick straight up from where we were previously. This is the second part of the line trace tutorial. We're going to add some extra functionality, expose some things to blueprints and just make the line trace from C++ a little bit more uh, indicative of what's happening. So what I've mentioned is that blueprint has an alternative which is out of the box just a little bit more useful. I've made a very simple implementation. I'm not going to go too much into depth with this, but I will put it on the screen that if you wanted to copy this, you can. It's very similar though. We're just getting a location, a start point, uh, creating an endpoint, casting 2000 units into the world, and then doing a line trace by channel, and we're not filling anything out afterwards. So pause the video if you wanted to implement this yourself. But like I said, this isn't the main uh, topic. I just wanted to show some of the extra features that doing it in Blueprint provides you. So we get some of the same things we had previously. We have our parameters, which we can update. Uh, we have the option to make this persistent or just for duration, which is kind of what we did previously. And we have the trace channel that we can put this on, which is at the moment is visibility and camera. Now, the other things that we can do, so the, the important thing is that we actually get the option to draw a debug line. Uh, so this is kind of matching the line trace plus the debug we've done separately ourselves. Now the great thing about the debug here is that if we draw this and go in um, and give this a quick test, it actually has some really nice things where you can see we've got that red square at the end of the trace. So this is actually making it very clear that this is in fact hitting the object. It has traced the object there. So we can see the hit point would be that red square and then it's carried on for the rest of its 2000 units in that green line. So these are some of the things that we don't get out of the box in the C++ version. And this is why, especially when debugging, I do a lot of my testing with uh, a similar setup in Blueprint, just so we get this extra functionality. But part of what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be adding things like this uh, hit locator at the end, so that when we're using the C++ draw debugs, we at least get this idea of whether or not we've had a successful trace very quickly. So that was just a quick implementation. That was what I wanted to mention, uh, kind of like the comparison. And I've just used it on Interact, so that was just overriding the previous version. If we remove that, then we get our orange C++ trace back. Okay, so of course, what we're going to do is go back over to our C++ file, and we'll start implementing the new versions. Now, the first thing we can do is if we start back off in the header file, uh, like I mentioned, we kind of have an arbitrary number at the moment, which is this 2000, which is just the units we're tracing forward. But this is something that we could easily put into um, an exposed variable for blueprints. Uh, and that means that we can update this at any time if we want to trace further or reduce the distance, then we can do that very, very quickly. So we can go back down, we can just put this in our protected section and we want to make this a float value and we'll just call this the trace distance. So we're going to do uh, exactly the same thing as we have here. So we can just actually copy the previous U properties, paste this above here and I'll put this under the category of interact or interaction. Now with this we can go into our C++ file. We can give this a default value just um, so that it has an example of what would be a good distance when we see this in Blueprint. And we'll give this a default of 2000 units. Okay, so that's kind of set up, which means we can come back in and find our uh, random number and we can replace this with something which will just make a bit more sense when we read back through uh, at a later date, which is going to be our trace distance. So we now know that when we're looking at this, the end location is the start plus the forward vector plus the trace distance or multiplied by the trace distance. So that just makes it more readable. Now, the next thing is when we're trying to program C++ properly. This was a little bit of, um, like I said, just a very quick implementation. Now the interact pressed function should only be doing like small amounts of logic. It shouldn't be doing anything quite as generic as this. Not all interact, not all things that will happen on interact press might require a line trace. So this is a bit too generic. So what would be good here is we're going to come back in and create another function. And this is just to try and make the classes a bit more spoken specific to do just what they're meant to be doing. Keeping them in mind that we're going to want to expose this in Blueprint so that we can quickly call the trace function in Blueprint as well so we can get any overrides or the uh, results from that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the new function so we're going to need another void and we're going to call this trace forward. Because we know we want this to be potentially called in Blueprint so we're going to add a u function here and we want to add the blueprint native event. 
So this is a specifier which means that the bulk of the logic is expected to be done in blueprints. And for that reason, when we implement this in C++, we don't actually create the trace forward function. What we do is below this, we create another void and we call this one uh, trace forward underscore implementation. Okay, so it's the same name as the function which we called in blueprint, so trace forward as we have here, but then underscore implementation afterwards. And we can come in now and we can create a definition of this. And this is the one which will actually be doing the logic in C++. So we actually have this function ready. All we want to do is we're going to grab everything from interact pressed. We're going to cut this and we're just going to drop it into the trace forward implementation. And this is just a tidier function now because that describes much better what this is doing. This is a, a function purely dedicated to tracing a line forward, whereas interact pressed was a little bit, um, it didn't quite describe what it was doing. But, uh, but when we press the interact button, what we do want to do is call the trace forward function. And again, notice we're calling the actual uh, function that we created of this, uh, the one which is going to need to be fired off in blueprint potentially as well, but that will still call our implementation. So you don't call the implementation uh, named function directly, you call the original version. Um, so it's doing pretty much the same thing, but like I said, this is just tidying up a little bit. Now what we want to do, we have most of our function down here for the tracing. We now want to add the information of whether we've hit something or not. So under the initial debug draw line, uh, what we want to do is we want to check if we have hit something. So we're going to use an if statement and we can just check our hit result. So if hit, then we want to draw another uh, bit of debug information. And this one is going to be called a draw debug box. Uh, now very similar to the debug line, uh, we want the world, which is just get world. We want our uh, impact point this time. So we have all of this information. If we have a successful hit, then we have all of this stored in the F hit result. So we're going to say hit dot impact point. We want a scale for this. So this is going to be a new vector. So we need to declare an F vector and I'll make this fairly big. So it's, it's visible. Uh, so I'll make this five, five by five, and then just make sure that we close this back off. Uh, we can give this a color. So F color and uh, choose something uh, we've got emerald is an option which i've just saw so i'm going to use emerald because i don't think i've done that before then we get the option to again keep this as persistent so we're going to say false and really we want this to be the same as the line trace there's uh, the the debug line we don't want the box to stay longer than the line so we're going to make this live for two seconds and that is it that is now uh, going to be a debug line which is going to be a little bit clearer than if we were to just leave it uh, just simply drawing a, a line trace where we wouldn't quite understand if we have a successful hit result. So again, we can compile this. This is now ready to go. But as well as um, adding that small amount of extra debug information, we've tidied this up a little bit. We've gotten rid of what people call magic numbers, which are just uh, variables which are pasted in the code, which don't really have any uh, reference or relevance just by a quick glance, which is something you don't really want. So we've made that now a stored variable. So by name, we now know exactly what that's doing. And we've made the functions a little bit more specific, again, where the name of the function really describes what it's doing now, it makes it quite clear. Uh, I missed a step here, actually. Um, you, <laughs> I just uh, compiled this, obviously, and we can see there's some errors. Uh, we cannot use hit as a uh, Boolean, it doesn't return that way. So what we want to do is just above this, we are going to create a new variable. So we'll call this one um, so it's going to be a boolean type and we'll call this b hit what we can do is we can still use our trace information but we want to return from this whether it hit that's the the step i forgot uh, so what we want to do is say b hit equals the get world again and in fact we don't need to do that uh, we already have all of this that would be creating another line trace sorry so again apologies sometimes doing this on the fly uh, you kind of overlook things when you're recording so we're going to come back up to the line trace we already have uh, we're going to change this now to uh, we'll say bool b hit equals the line trace we've already cast and that saves us doing the logic twice we can just change that to b hit and we can hit compile and that should work so I'll just let that compile to double check everything okay perfect that has compiled successfully so if we navigate back on over to the engine what we should see now is that when we hit something uh, if we fire into the air we're still getting our standard orange line trace uh, but if we hit 
something successfully and it actually finds it, then we can see we've got our emerald uh, square showing us that we actually have traced against that object. And although the rest of the line is still going through it, uh, same with the blueprint implementation, we can actually see that if we wanted to return some information about the object that we've hit, then it would, from that, it would give us the impact point. It would tell us that uh, the cube is called either cube two, three, or four, things like that. So we can actually confirm that we are getting a successful trace. Now, likewise, uh, the way that we've exposed things in Blueprint as well, we can come up and we can make this now a lot shorter. So we can make the line trace something like 500 units. Uh, and you can see that we're not even tracing uh, as far as the character itself. So we'll put that back up. And the other thing now is that we have the option to override this because we've made this blueprint native. So we can get our trace forward function. So this, when you override something that way in C++, when you make it blueprint native, this is how you get them as events. So this is very similar to things like the, the jump functionality and stuff in the player class. You'll see that when we call jump, it gives us the jump as an event or uh, sorry, on the event on jumped. So this is some code in C++, which has been exposed as a Blueprint native event, and that's how you get this. And that's another really good way to learn C++ as well, kind of on an off tangent here. But if you ever want to replicate something in your code and you're not 100% sure what the specifier would be or the approach taken, you can just find something which has been done in a similar way in an existing class. You can go into those uh, classes in C++ and kind of debug through them to see how they've implemented it and then do the same thing for your code. So this is going to be our trace forward override. And what we can do is we could do two separate line traces, for example. So we could get both the Blueprint implementation and the C++ implementation. To do that, you need to make sure that you remember to call the parent function. If you don't call the parent function, then that will override the C++ implementation. So I'll just show you that. So if we just call this now, it means it's going to not do the C++ bit at all. And we're just getting our red line trace uh, and just the red debug. Now, if we hook this up to the parent trace, that means it's going to come in when this function is called in C++. It's going to do the implementation function first of all, which will give us our orange trace. And then afterwards, it's also going to do blueprint line trace, which isn't overly clear, but you can kind of see there that we do have the emerald square right next to the red debug there. Uh, what might be clear is just doing something like a print string. So if we try that again, we can see we're getting our orange uh, C++ trace line, and we're getting the word hello appearing on the side. So we're getting to override the function in Blueprint just to, again, add some flexibility to the pipeline of merging C++ and Blueprint together quite nicely. So that is the implementation of line tracing. The way that you'd normally use this, like I said, we're, I'll probably work this into some kind of interactive functionality. So maybe I think in the next videos I have planned, I want to do some interactable objects, so some pickups and things like that. So what we can do is we can use this to trace from the camera, find out if we are looking at an object that can be collected uh, and then run that functionality. You'd also use this for things like weapons. So just to kind of visualize how the code would work is you would use line tracing to fire forward from the weapon. The start point might be the muzzle point of the gun. The end point again is gonna be as far as you want the bullet to travel. And then you can use this to see whether you've hit enemies or uh, destructible objects and things like that. So this is a very useful function, which is why you wanna get into the habit of making it as flexible and as extendable as possible, uh, making it very clear on where things are being hit, if things have been hit and so on, um, because it's a very, very useful function, uh, the line trace functionality, and is used in a lot of games. So like I said, trying to make these as generic as possible, and then you can expand upon this as you need them, and hopefully that now makes a lot more sense. So I'm gonna leave that video here for today. As ever, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.